European citizens have spent the last two years voting to reject the failed policies of multiculturalism and mass immigration. So isn't it an amazing coincidence how left-wing parties in Europe who will benefit from votes from future naturalised migrants and their children have been so welcoming of them. Being completely dependent on government, those naturalised citizens will then vote for even bigger government. Big corporations also love mass immigration. It means a fresh supply of cheap labour that will drive down everyone else's wages. So who else benefits? Economic migrants who are abusing the crisis by claiming to be Syrian refugees when they're clearly not. As the Sydney Morning Herald reports, 90% of those arriving in Serbia from Macedonia say they're Syrian, but have no documents to prove it. 90%. They're finding discarded ID cards belonging to Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. These people aren't fleeing war. They're not running from ISIS. They're trampling on the backs of legitimate Syrian refugees in an effort to try and suck off Europe's giant welfare state. And then you have the Syrians themselves. Isn't it an amazing coincidence how many of these war refugees have no interest whatsoever in remaining in peaceful European countries that refuse to shower them with cash? And many of the refugees don't even look like refugees at all. They're mainly working age men, well fed, not emaciated, not hungry. They're not wearing rags. Many of them are even carrying the latest iPhone. And I don't begrudge people seeking a better lifestyle, but can we please stop pretending that all these individuals are fleeing from war? What makes someone a refugee is that they're fleeing from danger, not fleeing to a higher standard of living. What on earth has Pakistanis flooding into Sweden to get on benefits got to do with actual Syrians escaping ISIS persecution. And how is that in any way comparable to Jews fleeing Nazi Germany, as some sectors of the media have framed it? But isn't it commendable that rich Gulf Arab states located right next to Syria are really pulling their weight in helping Europe deal with the burden? Here's a list of how many refugees Saudi Arabia Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, and Oman have taken in. Nada, zilch, zero, sweet, F-A. While Germany alone takes in 800,000. Months ago, ISIS promised to exploit the migrant crisis to infiltrate thousands of terrorists into Europe. But don't worry, they'll be well looked after if Sweden enacts what some of its political class are calling for jobs, welfare, and housing for Islamic State jihadists, all at taxpayer expense. So while European citizens are being frisked at airports every single day, potential terrorists are being invited straight in with no security checks, no ID checks, nothing. And in the name of diversity, we're welcoming into Europe huge numbers of people who are completely intolerant of diversity. Case in point, a head teacher at a school in Germany situated near a migrant camp is telling teen girls not to wear mini skirts because it might offend the migrants and provoke attacks. Many of these people are illiterate. They have no concept whatsoever of Western liberal democracy. They have no concept of freedom. They have no concept of treating women as first-class citizens. And there's no plan in place by European governments to integrate them into this way of life. As Peter Hitchens writes, mass immigration means we adapt to them when they should be adapting to us. And what was the cause of this crisis in the first place? And I've said this so many times that it seems almost cliched at this point. But the media still never mentions it. They act as if this crisis just emerged out of nowhere. It began after NATO governments armed and funded jihadist rebels in Libya and Syria, many of whom went on to join ISIS. If you keep destabilizing secular governments in the Middle East and trying to replace them with jihadists, the wave of legitimate migrants trying to escape that turmoil will never end. As Ron Paul writes, here is the real solution to the refugee problem. Stop meddling in the affairs of other countries. Embrace the prosperity that comes with a peaceful foreign policy 
not the poverty that goes with running an empire. But after causing the migrant crisis by intervening in Syria in an effort to topple Assad, the same leaders are now using the migrant crisis to justify further intervention in Syria in an effort to topple Assad. And as per usual, they're resting their propaganda on the corpses of dead kids because we're going to save the Syrian children by bombing the Syrian children. And all the usual hashtag trendies are jumping on the grief bandwagon to try and push their political agenda. Listen, until you're prepared to personally house a migrant and pay their way, stop tweeting migrants welcome to try and make yourself look good in front of your progressive friends. The little boy washed up on a Turkish beach didn't die because the West has immigration laws. His family was already safe in Turkey. He died because of criminal people smugglers who were willing to break those laws in order to get a payoff. European leaders are committing cultural and demographic suicide. Instead of handling this rationally and methodically by determining who is an actual war refugee and who is abusing the system, They've just swung the doors wide open, encouraging millions more to flood in from countries that have nothing whatsoever to do with the Syrian refugee crisis. This isn't compassionate humanitarianism. It's politically motivated lunacy. And it's going to end in disaster.